Well, as we get down to it now, I, I think there's a couple of positives with us, and there's still some negatives, but positives are we're still taking some steps in the right direction. We're uh, Maybe the most encouraging thing is that our leaders are uh, are playing their best basketball, and I think that's what has to happen. They're getting a little more consistent. They're constantly reminding their teammates, as I am, that, uh, you know, let's think bigger than we've been thinking and realize that... Uh, Winning a few games in a row is not, to use Day-Day's phrase, uh, that better not be the ultimate goal. It better be a stepping stone into what we do here. And With two weeks left in the regular season, uh, there's still a ton to play for. I mean, I don't, I don't look at the crack in the door that was left by the Wisconsin-Maryland of being anything. I look at the bigger picture of, you know, us continuing to play better and hopefully get ready for the Big Ten tournament and playing some of our best ball at that point. Um, I think we're winning because everybody's doing a better job. You know, it's our seniors that have definitely stepped up. Uh, Trice has definitely stepped up. Uh, Valentine has been there. Um, Dawson is becoming the defensive player that hopefully will get the recognition he deserves in the league because not only is he defending different positions, but his shot blocking ability has been phenomenal. And uh, he's done a great job of that. Uh, as far as Minnesota goes, you know, the, the, they're among the leaders in the whole nation in steals. We all know that. They they press. But they've got two guys that are playing their best basketball in Hollins and Walker. One big, one guard. And uh, maybe the scariest stat for me, because I had them picked as with Iowa as a sleeper team this year, um, it's been a number of close games, you know, nine of them. They've lost by six point or nine conference games have been decided by six point seven. They've lost, and that's been the difference. When they lost those six in a row to start the season or whatever they lost, they were all very close games. And I think that uh, speaks volumes that they are a good team. They've just been a little unlucky and haven't quite gotten the job done. But with their, you know, a lot of it was Holland's. He was really struggling early. He's been on a couple-week rampage now where he's upped his game a lot. And Walker, the weight he's lost and, you know, how he's playing is uh, is a lot better than last year. So uh, I think they've got some good young kids that they're starting. They start a bigger lineup, at least they have, the last couple games uh, with a 6'9 wing guy. And uh, those things can create problems for us. So my biggest concern will be, whether we take care of the basketball, whether we continue to play at the high level we've been playing at as far as our our three stars, and uh, whether we can get our role players playing a little bit better. Still want to get a little more out of Elvin Ellis. Still want to get a, a little more out of Marvin Clark. Um, that's still going to be maybe a job that uh, we'll work on all year long. So questions, I'll take them. I'm talking with Jess Settles yesterday, and he said that one of the reasons your team's peak is when guys learn their role and just do their job. Don't try to be who they're not. And he said he thinks that's the biggest change in this team since this win streak is guys are just being content doing their job as best as they can. Do you agree with that? I do agree with that. I, I think that that's every team's goal, though. I mean, you know, Bill Belichick uh, coined the phrase, you know, do your job. And it's hard, especially in basketball, you know. Um, everybody wants to do somebody else's job. Everybody wants to hear from somebody else how well they're scoring or what they're doing. And uh, if you look at the greatest players we've had, it's been guys that do do their job, you know. And um, right now, you know, I think we're getting more out of Dawson in that respect. Uh, I think of both of our centers, are, you know, they struggle at times, but they're trying to do their job. I think Travis is more comfortable in in what he's doing right now. And Tom, you know, understands he's not a great shooter, so I'll do my job. And uh, so I think Jess is right. I think, uh, but I think that's true for a lot of teams, but maybe especially true for this year's team. That, you know, I was just talking to Jake Boss, who I think you had in here, and he talked about seniors having to adjust from role players to star players and. You know, everybody wants that to be able to do that, but uh, 
not many can accept the responsibility that goes along with it. I think what we're getting out of our upperclassmen is they're starting to accept the responsibility a little later than you'd hope. But uh, as the saying goes, better late than never. Tom, with, uh, with Tom Tom, the point in the season in which this evolution has kind of happened for him, was there any chance it could have happened earlier, or is it, is it when he was ready for it that it, everything kind of coincided? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I suppose in some ways it could have happened earlier, but, you know, I, I wouldn't – I'm trying not to uh, – I'm trying to figure out in my own mind, you know, it's not like Travis didn't do this, this, and this. It's. I still think a lot of it had to do with the way we wore people down early. And uh, and I, I, I see guys on other teams now that are playing 36, 38 minutes a game are starting to wear down. So – I, I think part of the, the issue was uh, we had to get Travis to the point where he knew what his role was, and uh, he's got the most multi-dimensional role on the team, really. Uh, you know, you can say Valentine does, but in, in my mind, Trice does because he's got to score. He's got to still run the team. He's got to guard, usually a very good player, um, That's and then run our break, which is taxing on a, a point guard. So... Maybe Tom could have done it a little bit earlier. Maybe it would have helped Trav a little bit earlier. But we're in such disarray most of the month of November and December with those injuries and hoping to get players back that I'm not sure we could have done it much earlier. Maybe a little. Maybe a little, but not much. Tom, I, th I thought you said uh, Javon would be reevaluated this week. I wonder if that's happened yet, if you have a prognosis. I think he will. I think, uh, I think it's Friday um, that they're going to – reevaluate to see if uh you know he's been in a boot the whole time take him out see if he can walk pain free um you know i don't understand the whole thing to be very blunt and honest with you but uh if we could get him back a little bit you know just as something to be on the bench in case we needed a matchup issue and that it would be great uh in no way, shape, or form would it be anything that would hinder even his summer because I think we've had too many players not get better during the summer because of injuries, <clears throat> and we need him to get better. So we're not going to take any chances, but uh, we have dealt with some specialists and our doctors here and everybody else, and it seems to be the way they, they want to go. So whether it's Friday or Monday, I don't know, and all that will say is we're going to keep the boot off we're going to try to let him maybe shoot a little bit. And, you know, it's still going to be a process. But could he come back for the Big Ten tournament or something? I guess slight chance, possibility. Will he be useful for anything else than, you know, just a complete sub in case uh, somebody gets hurt or somebody gets in foul trouble? I, I doubt it just because of the time off he's had. Tom, now that Brandon has become just the, the thing that you expect every game, he's he's found that consistency. Can you look back and and figure out where it flipped for him? Was it the off season? Was it a conversation or someone out you know on the outside yeah. who helped him get to where he is right now? Well, there's been a lot of conversations. I can tell you that. Um, I do think he had a, a lot better off season. I think uh, number one, he was injury free. Um, most of the summer, um, I think they had a lot of guys that worked out together, and he was part of that. I think uh, I think he felt better about his shot, even though he doesn't shoot it. I mean, if you watch him in practice now, he makes so many more shots. Uh, you know, and that always makes a guy feel better. And then I, I think he realized that, uh, you know, the end is near, which all seniors do. And um, the consistency has been maybe the biggest strength we've had because he has been – our most consistent player, if you look at offense, defense, rebounding, put them all together. And uh, it's great to see it. I mean, I think he's worked to deserve it. I think he worked harder on his game his junior year, but I think a lot harder last summer. I, 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 I'd i say that was it, but it would be a good question to ask him and then tell me what he says so I know it for the next guy coming up. Tom, you mentioned about the, the crack in the door and – 
not wanting to pay a lot of attention to that, but with the focus over the last few weeks of just you guys getting better and how well it's worked out, do you almost hope your guys don't pay, <laughs> they don't pay any attention to what else is happening around them to keep that same kind of oh, definitely. mentality? Oh, definitely. I going? mean, uh, listen, I mean, I still think Wisconsin's the best team. I didn't get to see the game. I was on the road recruiting last night. Um, <clears throat> I still think they are. I think they'll it'll it'll really open it up for this weekend where they'll get Jackson back and they'll get, you know, it's senior day or whatever, and then they'll be upset about the loss. So it'll give Bo a little motivation. But they are the best team in the league, I still think. I really do. And uh, – and I think that that crack is only means that teams with four losses are still in the in the mathematical loop to use a you know it sounds like uh, Major League Baseball you know where at the end of the summer you're mathematically still in it. But uh, my big goal is I don't even I I don't even talk or think about it. All I think about is if we can keep getting better because this team has gotten better. Um, for a variety of reasons, and if we can continue to do that, you know, the Big Ten tournament, you have a chance uh, when it's one and done if you have a good game. And and then uh, the NCAA tournament, hopefully, you know, depending what the matchups are and that, it's really going to come down to it. And I think you saw a little bit of it last night. I mean, Maryland does match up better with Wisconsin than most teams because they have such size on the perimeter. And uh, matchups become such a big issue. So, yeah, I don't want my guys thinking about any crack in any door. I want them thinking about are we going to get better each and every game right now because we're doing that on a fairly consistent basis is now can we finish games? Can we play 40 minutes? Not 30, not 25, not 35. Can we play 40 minutes? Tom, one other question on Tom Tom. He, he, he talked about uh, his scouting of opponents and himself defensively evaluating his own defense. Kendrick Nunn, it, it seemed to be his best performance yet in getting above screens. Where is he defensively now versus even a month ago, and, and what, what's allowed that to happen? Well, I, I, I definitely think Tom's a guy that he spends a lot of time in this place. You know, he's watching film. He's shooting in the morning. I mean, we got to kick him out of here. Uh, he's such a refreshing guy because you'd have to be there when he gets meal money. You know, you think somebody ha- handed him a million dollars. I, I continuously tell him, do not become Americanized. You know, stay right where you're at, you know, and uh, because it's it's so much, I see so much joy in a guy that, um, that uh, appreciates everything. And I think because of that, he studied. I think my staff has done a good job with him. I think there's a confidence within the players that, and he has a God-given skill. He can get over a ball screen about as good as anybody I've ever had. Part of it's because he's small. Part of it's because he's small and skinny, but he's small, skinny, and strong. Those aren't usually the normal combinations. And uh, because he's all three of them, I think he can slither his way through them or he can ram his way through them. But he does get over ball screens well, and he has a very high basketball IQ. Uh, give his high school coach credit. They... He really understands where he needs to be, where he should be. He studies enough film that he understands what his opponent does. And, uh, you know, if he keeps working um, and stays that same way, uh, he has a chance to be one of the best defensive players that has played here. Charlie Bell still standing there? Yeah, yep. And we still have the Charlie Bell moves on certain things. But uh, Charlie is, and Charlie had – Quite a bit more size than Tom, too. But uh, but Tom might have almost a better ability to get over ball screens. Charlie had a better ability to get over the pin-down picks and flare screens and different things he could do so well. Watching Sunday's game on TV against Illinois, it really looked like a dogfight out there. I mean, obviously the intensity was revved up because of what happened here at home. But do you expect, I guess, teams to come here and face you in the remaining four games wherever you're at on the road or here to be, I guess, as physical as that? Or do you expect some intensity since it's the season's coming to an end? Regular season's coming yeah. to an end. Yeah. You know, I think the intensity level ratchets up at the end. But uh, what's nice for me is I was questioning whether we could match that. And uh, I think we at least proved that 
you know, if we need to get into a fist fight, we can participate now. Uh, before, I didn't think we were as good at it or could participate. But, um, you know, I mean, there's going to be some, you know, tomorrow night's game is they're very athletic and uh, create a lot of havoc. You know, in Purdue, they're a very athletic, strong team. You know, in Wisconsin, they're a very big team. And in Indiana, they're, they're a super athletic team. So different kinds of teams are, are the four we have left. But uh, it's nice to know, and that's the advantage of conference games, especially with new coaches and different uh, teams. Um, You've got to be able to play different styles. And I think we proved at least that we can play a different style. That was the strength of this program for years, that – you want to play smash mouth? Fine. You want to run and gun? Fine. You want to press? Fine. I mean, nothing bothered us for years. And I didn't think this team was as good at that. And so we needed to be in a smash mouth game and, uh, and figure a way to compete. And hopefully we can build on that now. You mentioned going back in the years. When you first took over for Judd, you didn't have a lot of high-star guys. You had to just build it with a lot of blue-collar. Then you went through a different phase, different kind of guy. At Illinois, you lit into Tum Tum at one particular point, and he said, thank you, and went right back out. And I'm just curious, though, for you to have guys that maybe aren't as highly touted that when you ride them, they're appreciative and they don't get upset because they've been told how great they are for so long. Is there a fun, or more enjoyable coaching a guy like Tom for you? Well, what I'd really enjoy is have the guy that's really talented and could do that. Uh, but, uh, you know, sometimes our culture does not let those two things happen. But um, that's what I mean about Tom, though. You know, it doesn't matter what you say to Tom, he's going to say thank you. Um, he just appreciates being alive. He appreciates life. I never been around a kid that has such an appreciation. If he has a down day, I don't know where it is. You know, I, I it, and it is infectious. We talk about energy givers or energy takers. Um, he is an energy giver. He lights Denzel up, you know. It's really been interesting, too, because I think, I don't think you guys, I think you guys have handled it really well, but I think the general public, you know, wants to make the Tom Trav thing out to be a quarterback controversy. If you knew how much time Travis Trice spent with Tum Tum the first two, three months of this season, it was incredible. I mean, and the reason he did it is because he's such a nice kid. I think they're roommates on the road and um, and everything. And this has been uh, this has been a guy that brings way more to the table than his play. And uh, is it enjoyable for a coach? It's enjoyable. For anybody who's around him, it's enjoyable for you guys. If you interview him, he's going to be appreciative. You took the time to interview him, uh, not think, "Oh, I got to go do this interview." You know, it's refreshing. And if he changes, I'm going to kill him because uh, I just, uh, I, I, you, you kind of want somebody like that around. Um, and it is, I think it will grow. I do. I think people. Um, will take on his personality because he's so infectious in how he delivers it. And, uh, and it's so from his heart, you know, he's not, there's no BS to his stuff. I mean, it is, um, when he talks about, you know, getting to eat three meals a day, um, it's exciting to him, you know, when he talks about where we travel or if he gets a new warm-up suit or something, it's genuinely exciting to him. And uh, if he's going to change, I hope he comes out early so that it doesn't happen in the four years that I have him because it is it's it is fun to, to be around that. Yeah, it really is. Tom, I wonder if you could evaluate how well you guys have done this year against the press and, and how much of that you expect to see. Well, I thought we did an incredible job against Illinois. Uh, every one of their fans thought we were phenomenal against it. Uh, we just handed it to them one time after another. But in general, the two areas that I think we've been incredibly successful in has been against pressure and against zones. And sometimes I don't know how or why. But I don't think we've... 
you know, we've had a few issues when maybe teams surprise us or it's an all-out or maybe we're in foul trouble and we got the wrong people in the wrong spots. But for the most part, over the years, presses have not bothered us that much and zones haven't bothered us as much as I think sometimes they should or would. But we're going to get press, zoned, manned. We're going to get everything that, uh, you know, they can throw at us tomorrow. And, and like I said, uh, this team has been an eyelash from being very good. And they're still, what are they, 16 and 11. They still have the, I think they had the best non-conference record or one of the best. And uh, so I have great respect. And when they play different style a little bit, um, that's something you don't, your guys don't see all the time. How they handle it will be important, and you never know until you see a steady uh, dose of that. You know, uh, it's not just a pressing at the end of the game, but it could be throughout the whole game. I'll try to combine two. At the end of the Illinois game, how many of those, I think you had four late, but how many would you actually say were caused by the press? And then, because I know one was, there was a trap right by you and Trice in the middle of the floor. And then last year's game, does that – do help you at all? I think it was a pretty wild one here against them. I don't remember how much that was a factor in that, but I know it was a high-scoring game. Did you look, look back at that one at all? You know, I did a little bit this morning. Uh, you know, a different team. We're such a different team that I, I have not put as much into what a team did last year against us just because we're so different. But, um, you know, I thought some of what we did the other day was just basketball 101, and we flunked it. You know, coaching staff to the players. I mean, inbounding the ball two inches from the baseline. You know, uh, uh, just some mistakes that were made that were we played right into their hands. And you know, one thing about Illinois, they're an athletic group, man, and they they turned it up. And they're an athletic group, although so is Minnesota. So I guess that's where the worry is. If there's a bright spot when something happens like that against Illinois, and you get away and win it. Um, you get their attention a little bit more this week for a team that's going to do that on a steady basis. So I'm, uh, you know, I'm concerned about it, but I'm not scared of it. I don't think uh, what you saw at the end of the game is the norm for what we do. I, th- I just think we got to make sure that we're running uh, for a reason. We got to make sure we're trying to break the press and not get into just a helter skelter game, but we're going to try to attack it and try to score buckets off it and yet not get into a track meet that uh, that wouldn't be good for us, would be better for them. I guess we're doing everything up here, guys, since everything's so crunched. I don't know if you brought your soapbox with you here today, but um, just listening to you talk about Tum Tum and all the talk this last week about freshman and eligibility, does it, doesn't it seem silly to think that you force a kid like that to just sit and watch in a lot of ways? Well, I think a kid like that would be good to sit and watch in a way. I think it's 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 the superstars that it's silly. But the only problem I have with it, and I hate to go against our conference or whatever I'm going against, uh, putting, <laughs> rules like that couldn't be conference-related. <laughs> it's got to either be national or not. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused on how that's gone from the different people I've talked to and what I've heard, because it came out of nowhere to me. But I, I don't think – I think so many other things would have to change. Number of scholarships. The NBA would have to change their, you know, deal. Uh, I, think, I think what people are doing, and I understand this part of it, there are some problems that we're having in sports. I mean, we got a suspension a day right now, you know, and part of it is immaturity. And part of it is great article, by the way. Don't say that very often, but great article. Some of it is the social f- freaking media. Um, and all this, but what it's caused is it's caused concern, you know, and people want to get people, you know, there's so many kids, the data is going to start coming out of the kids that don't make it in the NBA and then don't have a degree either. And is that good for our society? So I think people are looking at it and grasping. Um, I mean, when I came back from Kuwait, I said the greatest thing that could happen to our country is every man and woman went into the military for one year, hopefully not at war, 
but went in the military for one year. I still 100% believe that. 100% believe that. Why? The discipline, the structure, the understanding of what's important. And I think that the powers to be are trying to look at something like this in the same vein. You know, this freedom to work, you're right, it is a soapbox I could go on and all that, but I will always turn my side to, you know, why do you have to have a master's degree to get a certain job? Why do you have to be 35 to be the president of the United States? Why do you? Because those are the rules. You know, but it's like in athletics, we shouldn't make any rules. I don't, I don't get that either. But I think we're grasping at straws, you know, when we start talking about paying 800 athletes, you know, I don't know where that's going to come from. When we start talking about, I mean, a significant amount of money, we start about freshmen and eligible, I just don't know where that's going to, come from without a million other rules that are going to cost more money. Um, but maybe they know more than I know. So I'm not on a soapbox about it. I understand that what we're all trying to do, I think, believe it or not, I think we're trying to figure out, first and foremost, what is best for a student? What is best for a person 18 to 22 years old? At least that's what I... I swear to you, 90% of my decisions are based on that. What what can you really do to help them? Because those kids, when I'm in that old folks' home, they're going to be running our country. Some of them are. And, you know, right now it's, it's the wild, wild west. It's kind of a free-for-all out there. And, you know, the Constitution says freedom of speech, and now you got different people. You know what I loved about your article? I'm going to say this publicly because I heard it today again. What I loved about it is everybody's got these opinions, and they're never in the basement. They're never with us. Everybody's got an opinion how you should deal with somebody ripping you. 99% of those people never had anybody ripping them. Be 18 to 22 and have that happen. Be 15 to 22 and have that happen. Are we insane, what we're thinking? It's ridiculous. It is going to affect you. I did a little bit of research, and I know that there's one or two guys that you brought out, you know, like, like how could you bring their names up or their Twitter account up? Well, that happens to our guys every day. You know, but they're upset about it. I mean, are you kidding me? You know, why do we keep trying to make guys 15, 20, and 20, 30? You know, those are the greatest years of your life. So I don't know what's right and wrong on that. It is a soapbox for me. But if we truly did what we all say we're going to do, and that's the betterment of the student-athlete, There'd probably be some things that we wouldn't do now, like play 930 at night games and stuff. Okay, that definitely. But in the big picture of things, um, I just wish we had everybody so data crazy. I'm more of an eyeball guy. You know, eyeball. If I see how kids are acting, that's the eyeball test. I don't need the data. But if we're so data crazy, I can't wait till the data comes out on how many of these kids coming out don't make it. That's all I'm asking. If, if that answer is most of them are, I say let them come out when they're 10-year-olds. I don't care. Whichever best for them. But is it best for them? That, that's, it's best for a small percentage. You know, it would be best for Tom Izzo if the... Um, the uh, miles per hour was 100 on I-96, so I could get to Detroit and back in a short period of time. I'm just not sure that would be best for 95% of the world. I, because I'm from the UP, can drive in bad weather. So it would be no problem to go 100 down that, down that highway, and I'd be happy as hell. I'd get there earlier. I'd get back quicker. But I'm not sure it would be what's best for everybody else. And that's the way I look at this stuff, you know, are we really doing what's best? We keep making everybody younger uh, expected to be older. You paid your dues, but now, now guys coming up shouldn't pay theirs. 
What are they going to turn out to be? I struggle with that. I love LeBron. I love Kobe. You know, I love Magic. But I can, I can list so few guys that are like that that turn out to be great players, great people, and didn't get corrupted by the system. And that is my soapbox. So I don't agree with freshman ineligibility if it was just a conference. I don't even agree with it if it was everybody. Now my AD walked in, I'll probably get fired from my comments. But I do believe that we better start looking out for what's best and not think it's best just to give in to everybody. But what is best for a kid growing up? What's best for my kid? What's best for your kid? And uh, these people that I, – I laughed so hard on that article. I mean, I read it before the game. I mean, people gave it to me. My own players gave it to me. And, hey, hey, coach, what do you think? I said, what do I think? I think it's right on the money because I, 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 I'm thinking you put names out there of people and somebody's mad about that. That's what our guys get every day. Same age. That's what – my kid in eighth grade gets a lot younger age. And till the day I die, anybody calls me old school on that, I'll fist fight that. That's right school, man. That's just the way it is. I, I, don't, want, I, don't, I don't want kids going through the bullying and the, the way that uh, they have the right, because it's a constitutional right, to rip somebody and hide behind a keyboard. I'll fight that till I'm dead. Next question. That was a good question. You got me on a soapbox. Time for two more. I'm going to give them two because that was unfair that I, that I gave my... Uh... Maybe what Mark here, we can ask him about freshman ineligibility. Go back to uh, Dawson. Um, on the court, uh, you know, just some of the stuff he's doing offensively, uh, you know... It, is it just, is it a confidence thing that leads to that, or are there some you know some specific things that he's just improved in practice this year? It just seems like he actually can size things up and do different things yeah. in the post now. You know, Joe, you sound like me in bed at night or sitting in my office at home at night. I'm I'm, I'm wondering, I'm wondering the same thing sometimes. You know, because I'm trying to figure out what buttons did we push, did he push? How can I? How can I get through to people a little earlier? All those kinds of things. And uh, I guess I'd relate it to, you know, coaches always say that um, players are made in the summer and teams are made in the winter. And that poor kid missed a couple of summers. And uh, when you miss a summer, and that's when you're trying to improve on your skill, it's then all of a sudden the year starts and, I mean, with the rules now, 20 hours a week, we don't get a chance to improve as much on the skill stuff in the, in the winter as you do in the summer. And, and then I think maturity, you know, I think maturity. I mean, Brandon's been a great kid here. He's, he's given us nothing but, you know, frustration at time on keeping the motor running. And I publicly said that. I say it to him. But as far as going to class, doing what he's got to do uh, off the court, he's been phenomenal. And maybe, you know, the maturity level, the light just went on. But he is more comfortable. He had a great summer. I don't want to downplay that because if you interview him and he doesn't say he worked harder this summer by far than any summer, then the question would be, well, then why? Well, when you get that answer, call me because that's the million-dollar answer we're all searching for on what drives. Most of it is there is a – a level that each year, you know, they say when you turn 40, your eyesight goes a little bit. You know, you need glasses. Um, that is the way the world works, I guess. And, and some kids mature a little faster than others. But I think Brandon, for the most part, has, he gets it. He's a senior. He's put more time in. He's gotten more out of it. Um, he practices better. Uh, it's It's... One of the most frustrating things in my job, and it's one of the most rewarding things in my job. Frustrating that I couldn't get out of it a little earlier. Rewarding that you really see a guy that has grown and matured, and it's kind of the way the world works. You know, I, I wonder what I was like at 22, you know. Um, 
and I, I just think he's he's worked. You know, everybody wants a magic potion. I think he worked harder uh, his his year, and part of it was because of maturity. Part of it was because he didn't have the injuries for those two summers that he had. God, I wore you out on my, uh, huh? Bummed you out or what? Huh? I'd like to know uh, which one of those guys on those Twitter accounts is happy with you and which one's mad. Remove their names from the article. I, I heard they're removing their names from their Twitter account. Huh? Yeah. Why? If it's okay, why? Because you know why? The biggest problem, nobody understands what you go through until you go through it. You guys go through it a little bit. You, you write an article that somebody doesn't like, they rip you. But you're a little older than 20, and you're really able to handle it. And, and uh, it, it is so cool that they're mad at you because it just goes to prove my point even more. Until it happens to you, it's a joke. You know, I, I, I relate it to cancer, for God's sakes. If you never had anybody in your family with cancer, you care about cancer. You care about healing it. But, boy, is that upgrade when somebody in your family has something, you know. It's, it's kind of the same thing. When it happens to you, everybody can tell you how to handle it. I, I love these guys, these knowledgeable people that say, well, you just got to be able to deal with it. That's part of what you're in. No, it's not. And uh, I enjoyed it, so.